Even in India, bad guys fear La Chancla. Welcome to today's active self-protection lesson. I'm your host, John Correa. Today's video comes to us from India. Want to take your knowledge beyond the narrated videos? Join us on Active Self-Protection Extra and subscribe for multiple videos every week to help you get better in your defensive skills. So we can see the gentleman sitting there just on his phone, goofing off whatever in his yard. You can see this guy from the right hand side there sneak up on him and watch what happens when he goes and, and grabs like a, it was a cloth or something and starts to choke him. And that's very serious stuff. You can see him trying to get around to see what the guy's doing and his wife comes out and there's another attacker from the bottom right as well and she starts throwing the flippy floppies because everyone fears Lachankla and that gets the first guy off of her husband enough that he can get away from the choke and now they're going to start grabbing the chairs and it is literally a WWE cage match with the bucket flying and the, the first chair has been completely destroyed, so she's gonna pick up some stools. He's gonna pick up a couple more things here and, and throw them at these guys who clearly at some point had not thought this through inc incredibly well. So this couple's gonna throw some more stools at them and break those, and now it's a machete versus a broken plastic stool leg, and it's enough to drive these guys off. I've got a new story linked in the description. It's one of the crazier attacks I've seen. They drive them off, and that is where this one ends. Props to that elderly couple for having the courage and the willingness to defend themselves. If you want to learn how to get better at defending yourself, still time for you to join us at the Active Self-Protection National Conference, September 27th, 28th, and 29th in Manhattan, Kansas. Link in the description talking about our sponsors and the good that we're doing there, so why don't you join us? Out of today's video, I want to think about being on an initiative deficit as you defend yourself. I also want to think about maintaining distance against short range tools and communicating and working as a team to protect yourself. So of course in our home we expect to just be able to goof off and be in condition white and I get it, he's on his phone, he's doing not a whole lot of nothing, but when you're outside man you do got to have a little bit of attention to your world. If, if you can hear a little bit, now again, this guy's elderly, I don't know if his hearing is great or whatever, but your attention, paying attention involves more than your eyeballs. It involves your ears and your other senses as well, your sense of smell, what's going on in your world. And don't let your mobile device completely make you oblivious to the world around you. I get it, we're all on our mobiles, that's one thing but not having any attention is a big deal. Now, as a self-defender, you're always gonna operate from an initiative deficit, right? It's the bad guy who gets to launch the attack, who gets to start the encounter in CCW or in private defender encounters. And that's what happened here. So you gotta recognize, you gotta have some significant emotional fitness because of the initiative deficit. The bad guy's the one who gets to set the time and the place of the attack. He's not gonna tell you about it until the last minute. So you have to have the emotional fitness in order to flip the switch and say, I have to defend myself. And this gentleman did, he absolutely gets after this guy and says, hey, I have to defend myself against what's coming. Now, very difficult place he finds himself in. And now the guy's wife comes out and now you gotta work together. You got multiple attackers here and multiple defenders. It's a very difficult, very dangerous situation to be in. But in order to navigate this successfully, you gotta recognize every time you add an attacker, you're gonna add an order of magnitude to the difficulty of self-defense. And when you add a defender, it doesn't automatically add an order of magnitude to your ability to defend yourself. You have to communicate well and work well together. Now this lady sees the problem and I love the fact that she just grabs an environmental weapon and starts working with Lachankla. And, and listen, is that the best idea against a machete wielding guy? Well, he has a short range tool. She is grabbing something that she can get after him from a further distance and at the very least gather his attention so that he is not actively harming her husband. I actually think it's a fantastic strategy to use a thrown weapon, to use something that's a longer distance, an intermediate to long range weapon on somebody who has a short range tool like a machete like these guys have. It was very effective in this instance because at the very least it got him to think about something else and hit her husband was able to get out of the stranglehold that he was in. Now thinking about it, these guys have machetes. This is a very dangerous situation. So I love using something that has some ability to, to put a barrier between you and them. And, and I get it, she throws the bucket. The bucket's not gonna be super helpful. But notice here that she goes for the stools. And I can't tell you enough, the chair there was probably the better choice because getting something between you and somebody with a machete is the right choice. 
Also here, husband and wife working together, but they need to communicate well together. Notice they are working well together. They're ganging up on this guy, both of them attacking him, doing independent stuff to get after this guy, to distract him and to dissuade him and to discourage him. That's very good. Communicate well so that you can maximize your ability to do damage to this guy and get him out of your area of operation. Notice that grandma uses the chair here to stick between her and the bad guy. That to me is the right strategy because now you've got something that can act as an effective barrier between you and the attacker, between you and his weapon. In this case, a machete. Obviously not gonna work very effectively if they have firearms, but neither of them have firearms here. And so that works very effectively to get a barrier. Now, of course, I would prefer that they work to get inside the house, to get inside a security door like they have in that screen door, but that can be very difficult and may not be an ability to do that while the attack is ongoing. So attitude, I think, is first and foremost before everything. Notice that they are able to drive these guys off. I mean, obviously, these are amateur attackers. Obviously, they're crappy bad guys, and I'm very grateful for that. But attitude is the primary part of self-defense. And the fact that they were willing to defend themselves, had the attitude to defend themselves, was primary. Let's work on some skills here. Use the environmental tools that are available to us. Work together as a team and communicate well to cover our ASP.